Today, we're here to congratulate Chief Clunas as he takes the oath of office. We also thank him for taking on this momentous responsibility. He's a veteran of the Winnipeg Police Service who loves the WPS, loves the city, cares about his colleagues, and cares about the citizens he serves. This is a chief with integrity and heart, and I'm confident you will see those qualities in action. Every department has its role to play in making a safer, more peaceful Winnipeg. We are all committed to playing our part. Chief Clunas, we know that there are many challenges ahead, but we wish you insight, patience, and courage as you work to fulfill the mandate of your high office. Now I'd like to call Chief Clunas to the lectern to take the oath of office. I, Devon Anthony Clunas, I, Devon Anthony Clunas, do swear that I will and truly serve Her Majesty the Queen, do swear that I will and truly serve Her Majesty the Queen, her heirs and successors according to the law her heirs and successors according to the law, in the office of, Ch of Chief of Police for the City of Winnipeg, in the office of Chief of Police for the City of Winnipeg, with no favor, with no favor, or affection, or affection, malice or ill will, malice or ill will, and that I will, to the best of my power, and that I will, to the best of my power, cause the peace to be kept and preserved, cause the peace to be kept and preserved, and will prevent all offenses, and will prevent all offenses against the persons and properties against the persons and properties of her majesty's subjects of her majesty's subjects and that i will to that i will to the best of my skill and knowledge to the best of my skill and knowledge discharge all the duties thereof discharge all the duties thereof faithfully and according to the law faithfully and according to the law so help me god so help me god <laughs> that's what This is a significant date for the Winnipeg Police Service, Chief Clunas, and the public service as a whole. Today, Chief Clunas will swear that he will, to the best of his ability, cause the peace to be kept and preserved. It is an awe-inspiring, humbling, and responsible thing, but Chief Clunas brings much to this task. Long experience, dedication to duty, care for the members of the WPS, and commitment to us, the citizens of Winnipeg. Thank you all for being here. Truly, I am in awe of this moment. Never could I have imagined this. Minister Swan, Mayor Cates, Chief Judge Champagne, members of City Council who are present, CAO Mr. Shigo, Chief Nepenak, Chief Clearsky, Ms. Hallard Sartrand, Chief McCaskill, and your bride, Mrs. McCaskill, members of the police community from across the province, the men and women of the Winnipeg Police Service, Mr. Mike Sutherland, Mark Pellerin, and George Van Mackelberg. I'm taking a page out of your book, Chief McCaskill. My lovely bride, Perlene. <laughs> My dear mom, family and friends, welcome and thank you for joining me on this absolutely amazing occasion. Today is an historic day in the city of Winnipeg. Never before in the history of the city of Winnipeg has a chief with such great hair been replaced by. <laughs> it is a first. Now, Chief McCaskill, you and I may differ in hairstyles, but we have a great deal in common. Uh, five years ago, I stood in this very room and watched as you accepted the call to serve as our chief of police. You were driven by a desire to make a difference in our police service, and you've worked hard to create a safer community built on strong trust in relationships. Without relationships, real care in relationships, we have little hope of making a significant positive impact in our city. Chief McCaskill, you've made a real difference in our service and our city, and I'm absolutely honored, sir, to follow in your footsteps. I share your commitment to building strong relationships, realizing that it is only through caring relationships that we will establish a strong, vibrant, and safer Winnipeg. Thank you for the opportunities you've given me to lead in our organization, 
They've been instrumental in getting me to this place. At this time, I'd like to thank another number of individuals who I call difference makers in my life who have helped to get me to this place. And I must go way back to my grade six teacher. Yes, my grade six teacher, Mrs. Hannah. Arriving in Canada from Jamaica came with many challenges. It's obvious the cultural and the climate challenges are quite obvious to us. But the one that posed the greatest threat to my future was the challenge of adjusting to the educational system. Simply put, I failed grade six. But Mrs. Hannah offered to meet with me daily, an hour before school, to help this young man. And under her guidance, I excelled in school, and the doors of a quality education were opened up to me. Now, without Mrs. Hannah's intervention, those doors would have remained shut for a lifetime, and I would not be standing here today as Winnipeg's 17th Chief of Police. Approximately two months ago, I had the privilege to visit Mrs. Hannah, who was sick in hospital. I walked into her hospital room, and I said, Mrs. Hannah, do you remember a little boy named Devon Clunis? And I was surprised by her response. She said, yes, I've been following your story, and I've been praying that you would become the next chief of police. I had not seen Mrs. Hannah in over 37 years. I thank Mrs. Hannah simply for the privilege of being able to apply for this position. Mrs. Hannah recently passed away, and today, I thank her for her caring, and I thank her for her prayers. She made a difference. I attended St. John's High School in the North End, and there I met three individuals who truly impacted my life. Mr. Bill Wedlake, Mr. Brian Birdie, and Mr. Dennis Pelisak, teachers who gave up themselves to individuals and to the community. Each one of them left an indelible mark on my life. Mr. Wedlake has been like a father to me over the years, and he's here today. And sir, you know the difference that you've made in my life. At this point, I want to note that teachers in our community have one of the most important jobs in society, and they need our support as they work to help our children. They have the opportunity to create the future. And one of my goals as chief is to enhance our working relationships with our educators. The next individual I have to thank is my field training officer of 25 years ago, Constable Larry Bailey. Larry was my field training officer. He's become a dear friend. And though he's now retired and living in London, Ontario, Larry is here today. Larry, you helped a scared young officer to succeed and overcome fears you likely didn't know that I had at the time. I thank you for the individual, individual you are, Larry. I must now thank someone whose two individuals are still currently with the service, Inspector Randy Benoit and Staff Sergeant Ernie Anderluck. Now, I know they have their eyes set on retirement, so they won't expect anything from me, right? <laughs> <laughs> but in 2002, after my first promotion, they invited me to work with them in the Organizational Development and Support Division. They are absolutely outstanding leaders, and they gave me the opportunity to work with our executive on a regular basis. They gave me a glimpse into how things operated at the executive level, and they sparked a desire in me simply to one day serve the organization in the rank of an inspector. I learned a great deal from both of you. Thank you very much. And I must also thank my immediate supervisor over the last four years, Deputy Chief Stannard. You sir created an exemplary environment which allowed us to achieve success in so many areas. You are the example of a true servant leader willing to do whatever it takes to encourage and support your people. You've given us a tremendous example to follow. Now there are many other members of the service who I would not want to embarrass by naming you publicly, but you know who you are. You believed in me before I believed and I thank you. Finally, I must thank the selection committee for giving me the opportunity to serve as chief. And I promise you nothing but my very best. Now, I became a police officer out of a great desire to make a difference in our community. My career has given me enormous opportunities to fulfill that desire, and it is that same desire for making a difference that caused me to apply for the position of chief of police. The basic mission of the police service is to prevent crime and disorder. We know that citizens are concerned for their safety and that crime continues to be a primary concern. Today, I am declaring that we will make a difference in preventing crime and disorder in our city. I'm declaring that Winnipeg will become a safer city for all citizens. We will do this, not I. As your chief, I am committing to take the lead, but I need all of you to go with me. 
we will take a multifaceted approach to reducing crime in our city. First, we will tackle crime head on. There will be more officers on the front lines responding to calls for service. Simply put, for those who choose to break the law, there will be consequences. But greater enforcement is not the only part of the solution. In addition to enforcement, more emphasis must and will be placed on prevention of crime. There will be greater presence of officers on the beats connecting with our citizens and helping to build strong communities. Crime prevention through social development will become a foundational philosophy of how we police our city. We will work cooperatively with the community in addressing social causes of crime. Now those include poverty, poor living conditions, alcohol and drug abuse, physical and sexual abuse, a lack of parenting skills and education. These aren't traditional police issues, but we must become a catalyst to change in our city. Police consistently deal with the consequences of associated with these social challenges, and we realize that we cannot arrest these issues away. We must raise the social consciousness of our community in understanding that much of our crime is socially constructed and that only by addressing the social roots of crime will we see a cost-effective, sustainable answer to crime in our city. Winnipeg is a diverse city both in terms of demographics and community dynamics, and we understand that one model of policing does not fit every neighborhood. We will be community-specific in addressing crime and addressing social issues. Our Aboriginal and newcomer communities face unique challenges that must be addressed with cultural relevancy. I will be meeting with the Aboriginal and newcomer leaders to gain an understanding of their needs and learn how we can work together to ensure success within the Aboriginal and newcomer communities relative to policing, but also to social success. I want every citizen of Winnipeg to understand that the police are the public and the public are the police and that it is incumbent upon every citizen to do their part in adding to the overall welfare of our city. Crime is not simply the police's problem. If we each do our part, we can eradicate the conditions conducive to the growth of crime in our city. That I believe. I am asking every citizen to examine their role in helping the police reduce crime and create a safer Winnipeg. We are at a critical point in our city's history. If we do not act cooperatively in addressing the social conditions at the root of crime, we may miss the opportunity to create a brighter future and be a difference maker. Each one of us is here at this time for this purpose. Yes, Winnipeg has an historic crime problem, but I believe it is one that can and will be overcome if we recognize the potential we have in working together. That is the solution. Anthropologist Margaret Mead had a quote which I believe applies to our present situation. She said, never underestimate the power of a small group of committed people to change the world. In fact, it is the only thing that ever has. I believe that one person can make a difference, but I also know what can happen when the power of one is multiplied by a group of individuals committed to a cause. That is who we need to become. Together, we can make a difference and change the future of our city. My life is an example of individuals willing to make such a difference, and I believe we have the collective will to see real change happen in our city. I believe something great is going to happen in Winnipeg in terms of the reduction of crime, and I believe it is something we can only accomplish if we do it together. The Winnipeg Police Service is calling, and my simple question to each and every one of us is, will you answer that call? Now, in closing, I have intentionally left two very important individuals to the end of my remarks because simply they have had the most impact and influence on my life. I must thank my dear, dear mom who bravely left all that she knew and set out to find a new life for her family in Canada. It's a lot colder here, mom. <laughs> but it's been worth it. I thank you for your love, your support, your sacrifice over the years. And I, now I come to the most important person in my life. You have been with me throughout the entire journey, my bride, Perlene. You have been my greatest source of comfort, support, and strength. Simply put, I would not be here without you, and I'll spend the rest of my days committed to showing you how much I appreciate you. I thank you for being my bride. Finally, today, I say thank you, God, for this day. And may God bless our city 
in the days, the weeks, the months, and the years ahead. I see great things happening for us. Thank you. Thank you.